What's up you guys, it's Matt here. Let's talk about Ripple and let's talk about XRP and let's talk about this stable coin that they're planning on launching that may uh, take on this $150 billion market that's dominated by few. So let's talk about the stable coin, let's mention how it affects XRP and also why they're deciding to do this. Now we're going through an article today, so if you guys wanna look up the article yourself and just read it yourself, feel free to go ahead and do that. Uh, you can type in the article and look it up yourself, but uh, I will provide some of my thoughts at the end um, and throughout as we discuss what this is all about, maybe as we go through different sections. So guys, if you could, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell for more of these videos. Also, make sure you check out some of the links down below. It does help out the channel. And if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, follow me on Patreon, those links are in the description. Also, if you guys want to trade XRP at up to uh, 50x leverage, you can utilize my uh, link for Margex down below. So feel free to check that out as well. But this is the article we're going over, which is a CNBC article. Uh, Ripple to launch US dollar stablecoin uh, taking on a $150 billion market that's dominated by Tether and Circle. So this is something that has been catching a lot of interest. I've been seeing a lot of conversations that have been, um, you know, have been started because of it. And also to understand um, how this is really going to affect the major position that we all talk about on this channel, which is Ripple, or sorry, XRP. Um, crypto startup uh, Ripple is the latest major player to jump into the $150 billion stablecoin market with the launch of a digital currency pegged to the US dollar. The stablecoin will always be backed one-to-one -one by an equivalent sum of assets. The US dollar uh, deposits... U.S. government bonds and cash equivalents uh, that the company holds in reserve, according to Ripple. The company, uh, the crypto firm, says its reserves would be accounted for uh, publicly uh, available uh, monthly attestation. Sorry, uh, reports. Um, in it did not say which firm will audit. Um, Ripple is the first uh, launching its stablecoin in the U.S., but didn't rule out offering additional regional uh, products in non-U.S. markets like Europe and Asia. Uh, the move would uh, pit Ripple against stablecoin giants like Tether, which is behind the largest stablecoin USDT and USDC issuer Circle. Uh, payments uh, giant PayPal, meanwhile, launching its its own U.S. Uh, dollar stablecoin um, called PayPal USD, a stablecoin backed by the U.S. dollar by U.S. dollars and U.S. and uh, dollar equivalents that is issued by crypto firm Paxos. Uh, but Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse said it, he's not uh, deterred by the the competition. This market will look different in in future. Uh, certainly uh, based on size, he told CNBC in an in interview this week. Now, I think that's interesting, right? Because them launching and having all that competition, I feel like Ripple does have the name to kind of propel it forward to a whole nother level, especially with the amount of support that's with XRP. But this ends up going into that question, where where does XRP land in all of this? Are we not going to see that become that uh, transaction-based currency in a way? Or is that just going to be utilized for certain features within their payment options, right? Um, why Ripple's launching a stablecoin? Garlinghouse said the company decided to introduce a stablecoin to the market last year in response to the uh, depegging of uh, rival firms, Tether's USDT, token and circles USDC. Uh, USDT temporarily lost a $1 peg in 2022 amid the market instability resulting from the collapse of Terra USD, a popular so-called algorithmic stablecoin. They say so-called. Um, it was an algorithmic stablecoin. It just didn't hold up with that algorithm. Well, the algorithm did hold up. It's just the overall support of it. It didn't have backing, but we can get into that in a whole nother conversation. Uh, USDC also temporarily slipped below $1 in 2023 after revealing exposure to uh, the collapsed tech-focused uh, Slender Silicon Valley Bank. Um, a lender, I said Slender. Uh, some critics dispute the, the source of Tether's reserves and have doubted about whether the company is sufficiently uh, capitalized to survive a bank run. Uh, for its part, Tether says its token is fully backed by uh, quality reserves 
and has always been able to meet uh, withdrawals, even in times of distress. Uh, Garlinghouse said there's uh, some uncertainty about the current market leader among U.S. regulators without disclosing a name. Uh, he argued that Ripple uh, is a regulated institution with uh, licenses in New York, Ireland, Singapore, among other countries. Um, Tether is the world's largest stablecoin issuer with a market capitalization of $106.3 billion, according to CoinGecko data. Uh, asked about Ripple's move to launch a stablecoin and uh, Garlinghouse's comments, a Tether spokesperson uh, told CNBC, we wish Ripple's team would have uh, more success with their new stablecoin than they had so far. Tether is registered with uh, FinCEN, the U.S. Uh, financial crimes watchdog, which is not the same as being regulated. The business is required to uh, submit suspicious uh, transaction reports and uh, reports for dealings totaling more than $10,000. Um, so again, uh, I guess what we're what we're dealing with here when we talk about why Ripple is launching a stablecoin is just that they're uncertain, right? The uncertainty that comes with uh, Tether and how many people do question it. I've seen so many reports where people are like, Tether is not going to survive. Tether is is just a you know a, a bubble and it's going to crash. It's all going to come crashing down, and people just don't um, like believe in in that in the survival of Tether. And obviously, if you see that, you're going to have a lot of swapping systems that just don't work the right way because you're swapping from USDT to whatever the position, from USDC to whatever the position, right? So. I haven't heard much about USDC, but I've heard a lot about Tether. Not giving up on XRP. Um, a Ripple's um, Ripple stablecoin would also uh, serve as a purpose. Serve a purpose. The crypto giant uh, touts as a part of its on-demand liquidity product, which aims to settle transactions rapidly between banks and other financial firms using XRP token as a bridge currency. Interesting. Uh, Ripple uh, has faced obstacles in in finding a use case for Ripple um, with banks and and payment firms. Uh, Santander uh, initially wanted to use XRP for cross border payments, but chose not to after finding Ripple wasn't active active in enough markets yet uh, to support its needs. Uh, MoneyGram ended a partnership to use XRP for cross-border trans, uh, transfers after uh, citing increased costs associated with the need for partnerships with exchanges and other necessary counterparts in local markets. This was probably in reference to the fact that XRP was not available on different exchanges um, until more recently when it was labeled as not a security. Garlinghouse insisted uh, that Ripple hasn't given up on XRP as a payment token and that stablecoins would serve as a more a complementary product for the XRP ecosystem. We've been using stablecoins in our payment flows for years, he said. This is not a, a new thing for us. He added um, the other so-called layer one protocols. Um, blockchain networks with their own tokens have launched stablecoins and logged growth overall volume and liquidity. Uh, our view is having pools of liquidity uh, that are native to XRP Ledger, um, the complement and help grow the, wait, they complement and help uh, grow the XRP ecosystem, Garlinghouse told CNBC. In fact, the number of requests um, we get from XRP community is to launch a USD backed stablecoin um, on the XRP Ledger. XRP is up around 13% in the last 12 months, according to CoinGecko data. It's currently trading around 57 cents. I think it's like 59 at this point. Uh, expecting a, the SEC settlement in the millions, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission uh, in 2020 hit Ripple with a, a lawsuit claiming the company illegally sold XRP uh, to investors when it should have registered the transactions uh, with the regulator. A court judge recently ruled XRP um, is not in and of itself a security, but said that the sales to institutions uh, should be counted as unlawful security sales. The blockchain uh, company sold $728 million worth of XRP token to hedge funds and other sophisticated buyers 
um, according to U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. Um, the SEC is seeking $2 billion from Ripple as a part of the lawsuit, which honestly is just ridiculous. Uh, Garlinghouse said that um, what the SEC is asking for is unreasonable, and as and as it only pertains to the $728 million of XRP the, the company sold to institutions, he expects the total settlement uh, to be a fraction of that in the millions rather than in the billions of dollars. The SEC was not immediately available for comment. So honestly, this kind of clears a lot of things up because when we when I get questions, it's always related to like, well, what's next for XRP? And I guess it could be some form of a compliment, but you never really know the true uh, thoughts and, and how something will gain maybe a little bit more popularity than something else. But stable coins are meant to be stable. It's not something that a lot of people, regular people, are looking for gains within, even though you see minuscule gains that could have a massive impact to somebody that has a lot of that stablecoin. Um, but when it comes to XRP, you know, you could see a lot more of an impact when it comes to the overall growth of the position, the amount of use within that position. So it could be complementary uh, to, to XRP, um, but then again, you never truly know. So as of right now, they're saying that it's not something that's going to kill XRP or the future of that. Um, the thing that kind of killed it, not really killed it altogether, but um, has kind of diminished what it is, is the fact that we had in 2020, the SEC that came out and was like, look, you're doing this, it's wrong. And um, then XRP is labeled as not a security, but you still have that sale of a large amount that they label you know, as that. So. It's interesting. The whole thing is very, very interesting. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to know your thoughts on it and where you believe XRP will be and how you think this stable coin will fully be implemented within this ecosystem. But if you guys could, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell for more of these videos. Also, I have my link for Margex down below if you want to start trading up to 50x leverage. I would recommend starting with like 5 or 10x leverage. But I got to get out of here and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.